Sorry about that. Um, if, if I guess I'm talking about staying long term in your tent. You you have your family tent, and if it's one of those enormous ones, then you're not going to be humping that on your back. Um, even if when you see this video of this one man, it's a bit kind of one one and a half man tent over here. Um, when you see that video, you'll understand what I'm saying. You're not going to want to stay in that long term. If I was in a scenario, I'll tell you right now, this is the tent I'm bringing for its camouflageness, for everything that I speak about in its entirety. It's also it's very strong, it holds up against wind very well. Um, you'll see in the video, it's got all sorts of great features to it. Now, I'll tell you right now, it's not light. You know, that's going to come in at six and a half pounds, something like that. Um, whereas if I just brought a drop cloth and was going to bring my own natural shelter, um, that would be key. Uh, that drop cloth is going to enable me to make a really nice warm shelter. Um, depending on your area, you can dig inside, you know, the side of the hill. Um, everyone's environment is going to be a little bit different, whether you live in more hardwood trees or any of the deciduous trees um, or desert environment. Uh, you, you're going to have to figure that out. Once this series ends, we will do, be doing more demonstration type stuff. I don't know if I'll probably catalog it under the bug out series, um, but we'll be doing more woodland demonstrations and I've got some friends around here that are really eager to learn some of the things um, so I'll be taking them out and uh, I believe I'll try and film them as I teach them some of the things so with long-term I guess living is the best way to, to talk about it is the uh, um, forest fires forest firefighters um, those guys live in little pup tents working their butts off all summer long some of them live in, in a camp area scenario and get trucked in and back and forth but they will leave live weeks at a time out of a little pup tent it is not that comfortable so if you're able to take a bug out vehicle um, you've got a little bit more load room look into some of the larger military tents look into like Cabela's um, either a teepee would be a great size to weight ratio, but even some of their hunting lodges, if you've got the capacity to bring your vehicle with you and you're not, not going to be humping it on your back, um, some of the hunting cabins are great. You want to be able to stretch out. You want to be able to hang clothes. You want to be able to have a little area where you're keeping crafts, you know, keeping friends and family busy with projects. Um, you're going to need more room. Um, I'm trying to think of the movie. There was a movie not too long ago that came out um, that was uh, Defiance. They built some great natural shelters. And they, if you noticed, a lot of them were dug into the ground a little bit. And that's just from natural insulation to keep yourself warm through the winter. Um, you need to bring basic tools if you're going to be doing that. Look into augers, hand augers, that, you know, that just rotate around. Um, make sure you have a good mallet. Uh, look into a chisel, uh, probably about two inch big chisel um, to be using with the mallet. Um, make sure you have saws. You know, you need to be able to process the environment to make your shelters. And you're not going to be doing that with your Rat 3 and your survival knife. You know, you're, you need to be taking real, real tools out with you. Um, you also need to know that tarps don't provide a lot of privacy. And so if you're talking long term, and you know you want to be doing you know your bathing and, and a lot of that kind of stuff uh, just natural hygiene changing your clothes that's not going to offer a lot of privacy especially if you're with a group um, you know I've just a lot of people aren't familiar with camping rituals and um, so a lot of people are uncomfortable with tarps because they don't offer the privacy that say like a tent would um, so I just I want you to think about that before you decide oh I'm gonna go ultra light I'm going to get myself, uh, you know, a sill nylon tarp, and that's it, and we're going to go from there. But you get up there, and, you know, it doesn't have the privacy, it doesn't have the protection um, that a lot of the tents are going to provide. Um, I guess I already talked about earth tones. You know, obviously, you know, day glow orange and this uh, sun bright yellow is are not ideal colors. Um, but the green, stuff like that, there's a way to subdue them. Uh, we talked about building shelters we talked about bringing tools um, even nails bringing some just a handful of really strong big old nails um, you know paracord's great 
but um, you know even you can make natural cordage uh, but if you're gonna be digging in and you're gonna be there long term you're gonna need something that's gonna last and uh, something that's gonna be easy to put up um, oh the other thing I was gonna mention with the drop cloth if you're in a long-term survival situation if you have a natural shelter you have your own hunting cabin you know what this would make a great greenhouse material there's one reason I picked the clear um, you know you're gonna need food year-round you of course you brought seeds with you right we talked about that um, or I would probably haven't put the video up yet but we will um, you've got seeds with you so you're planting your garden you're planting your covert garden if you wanted to spread seeds around your bug out location if you have a single location you know you've already done that but one thing you can do is to help you around keep bugs off of them um, you know keep the temperature up from dying from frost in case you get a, a late frost is um, you can construct a nice little greenhouse out of the drop cloth material um, another one I believe I mentioned is one reason to dig into the ground is to conceal your infrared signature um, I believe I mentioned in another video, I don't know if I put it up yet, is um, Tromahawk. Um, not Tomahawk, but Tromahawk, 1973. Look him up. He's a uh, UK uh, firefighter, and he's got some really neat videos. And he did me a huge favor the other day, and he did a video about um, the uh, little blankets, the emergency blankets, the Mylars, that reflect 90% of your body heat back to you. Um, there's been sort of a big contemplation uh, with some friends of mine and in in the survivalist community of uh, whether or not those would um, hide your infrared signature and uh, he did a great little video on that and uh, he's got some really cool videos about his sort of everyday carry of how he's going about it um, through the fire department some of the stuff they carry on a daily basis and some of his um, bug out vehicle extrication tools uh, was one he just put up last week and that one describes um, you know the possible scenario of rolling your vehicle of um, being in your vehicle say your vehicle stalls while you're crossing a, uh, a flooded plain area um, he's got some really nice neat gear in that video and I'll see if I can put a link up with this but um, stay tuned <laughs>